nhằn 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 Hi, my name is David, and I work on the Galileo curriculum team. I'm here today with your project challenge, Cereal Box Automata. Your goal is to create an automata that explains where all the cereal goes. I personally think it's gremlins, but you might have a different idea. You also have the goal of being reflective by thinking about what is and isn't working about your automata design. The materials you'll need are drawing tools, scissors, large paper clips, tape, a cereal box, glue stick, a pencil, pliers, cereal, and paper. The Cereal Box Automata works by transforming circular crank motion into other forms of motion using flexible linkages. The Automata has three key parts. The first is the crank, which is a bent paper clip. The second key part is the paper linkage between the crank and the jaw. We'll call it the connection linkage. The third key part is the hinged jaw which is really just another linkage. So we'll call it the animation linkage. Okay, let's take a look at how to make this automata so you can start designing your own. First, cut your cereal box in half vertically as shown. The box is going to act as the frame of our automata. So if there's an open side of the box, just use some tape to close it up so the box is sturdy. Next, we need to bend the paper clip roughly into this shape. So we have our crank on the left, our axle points, on either side, and then our linkage drive point in the middle, with a holding tab on the end. Here's the actual bent paperclip, note that it's smaller than the drawing. It can actually be a little confusing to make the crank, so I suggest drawing the crank on a piece of paper, and then unfolding a paperclip and following the drawing of the picture as you bend the paperclip. So you can start by bending the crank handle, and then reference the picture to see which way you need to bend next to make the entire crank. When it comes time to make the holding tab at the other end of the crank, hold the whole crank over the box so you can see about where the holding tab should be. It should be right at the edge of the box. The purpose of the holding tab is just to keep the crank in the box. Use a pencil to poke a hole in both sides of the box, near the top and around the middle. Thread the crank into the holes you just made in the box and then test out the crank and see if it's working. This crank seems to be working well, so now we can attach a piece of paper to the linkage driver. Cut a strip of paper that is at least slightly more narrow than the notch of the linkage driver. So this one is too thick, so I'm going to cut this one down to make it thinner. To attach the paper strip to the linkage driver part of the crank, fold a tab of the paper over, and then wrap tape around both edges of the paper tab. Make sure the tape is flush with the paper, otherwise the tape can hook onto the crank and prevent it from rotating. As soon as this piece of paper is attached, you've now created your first flexible linkage. Start experimenting and see what types of motions you can create. This is also one of your first moments to really be reflective. I noticed when I started cranking mine, something was happening and the linkage would get caught and it wouldn't rotate all the way through. I had to look really closely and I found that I didn't make the tape totally flush in one spot, so it was getting hooked on the side of the crank. So I needed to fix that to make it work more smoothly. I fixed it by trimming off the small piece of tape that was sticking out past the paper. Once it was trimmed off and I started cranking again, I could see that it was getting caught way less often than it was before. There are a million different ways that you could go about making an animal that attaches to the top of your cereal box. The way that I'm doing it here is just cutting a strip of paper and then cutting two arches into either side of the paper to create a set of legs, and then taping those legs to the inside of the box. This gives me a stable surface to attach my jaws to that will be pushed on by the linkage. So next I folded a strip of paper in half and attached it to the top of the body, and now I can attach that folded piece of paper to the linkage coming up from the crank. When I test it, I see that it makes the whole head of the animal rock back and forth. And I really want the jaw to be going up and down, not the whole head. So I need to make some hinges in the jaw so it can bend at the jaw and not in the neck of the animal. 
So to make this work, I'm going to remove the linkage from the bottom and then bend the lower jaw back and forth. I want the paper to be as flexible as possible at this point so it bends freely. So bending back and forth, then apply tape to the bottom so the head is not gonna move up and down and then attach the linkage back on and see if it works. Once I started testing, I noticed that the jaw was working mostly as I intended. However, the paper linkage was being a little bit too flexible, and I thought I could get some more motion out of the jaw. To fix that, I cut another strip of paper and attached it to that paper linkage. And once I did that, the jaw started moving more. The example that I'm showing you is for a jaw. However, you could use this linkage system to make any part of an animal or creature move. Don't underestimate the amount of redesign that you will need to do when you are creating your creature. Getting the linkages to work smoothly will require you to be reflective and think about what is and isn't working about your design. Okay, that's it for Serial Box Automata. If you made an automata that explains where all of your cereal goes, we'd love to see it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.